West Ham United 2, Manchester United 0. Another shocking, pathetic away performance. And you know what? Fair play, you boys deserved it. You deserved it. You deserved it. For you, yeah. <laughs> it's for you. It was. Have a good Christmas. Have a good Christmas. Um, and what can you say? And what can you say? At the end of the day, we got what we deserved. We got what we deserved because we were spineless in attack. We were toothless in midfield um, and just conceded p p pathetic, petty goals. And so the first half, look, there was nothing in it. Both teams were really, really poor. Man United couldn't get going. Um, there, was no, there was no real danger from West Ham. Um, you know, their fans were so quiet. It wasn't even like one West Ham fan singing, nothing. It was dead as a doornail. I'm sitting there to Anton, I'm saying, well, I'll tell you what, the, the, this game is here for Man United to go on and win, you know? Improve in the final third. And what, and, and what we got in the final third was absolutely awful. You know, Ganacho was sort of clean through, couldn't sort his feet out. Anthony sort of cutting in, uh, easy shot for Aro, uh, Areola. Um, Kobe Mainu had a shot as well that got spilled, which should never have got spilled. But there was just no cohesive unit. There was no sort of understanding of where everyone's going to be. There was no thought behind it. There was no planning behind it. And that made it really easy for West Ham. I looked at, I looked at Rasmus Hoyland again. And again, listen, I like Rasmus Hoyland and I think that there's something there for the future. But that's exactly what it is. It's for the future. It's not for now. Well done, mate. You've you done well. You've done well. Um, it's, 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 it's for the future. He's not ready to lead the line for Man United. He looks like a little kid against big grown men. And essentially, that's what he is. Now, I know he's 20 years of age, I think. And I believe that there's something there. But right now, it's not working. Then you look to young Nacho, it's not working there. And you're looking at Anthony, it's not working there. We have nothing in attack. Nothing up top. Awful. And in midfield, obviously, Bruno comes back in. He's supposed to be captain us today. So it's we're leading away. And what we get is arms up, you know, poor passes. He made one good pass through ball uh, to, to Luke Shaw where we crossed it and then, and then West Ham comfortably cleared it. But again, he went missing. I think um, McTominay, again, nothing there in midfield. No creativity, no ball retention, no nothing. Kobe Mainu plays beyond his years, but he, he did make a bit of a spate, obviously, for the second goal, which, which killed the game. But you're not going to get onto a young kid who's, who's starting to understand how to play his role. He's starting to understand how to, how to, how to move forward in his Man United career and, and get involved. So that's what we need to do with him and give him confidence. He knows that he's made a mistake. But essentially, we were at sixes and sevens and it's like, again, at, at Liverpool, what did we say? That was not enough. That was not going to be enough to make us feel like we, we could come here and win. And I said it. I said, look, <laughs> just because we've done that, do you feel like we can go and win against West Ham? Probably not. And that was exactly what happened. But the biggest concern for me is a complete lack of goals. The types of goals we conceded, which were poor. Um, obviously, young Camboyla comes in there, didn't put a foot wrong. Darren Fletcher was sat next to me up in the gantry and he said that he was coming off the last sort of 10 minutes because he had some cramps, so fair play. Kid didn't expect to play, didn't really put, put, put a foot wrong. But how you let Pakatar, um, you know, be able to dink the ball over, over the defence like that. Luke Shaw, not close enough, couldn't get there. And then Bowen gets a little bit of luck off Onana and it goes in. It was just so, so poor. It was really, really poor. And then you just knew we were never going to score. We were never going to score. Marcus Rashford comes on up front, hardly had a look in. Looked like he was, you know, couldn't get involved in the game. Head straight down the tunnel at the end. Most players did. I think Ericsson went over to clap. Camboala did. Said sorry for the performance. And I caught up with Aaron Mombasaka um, after the game. And it was sort of a chat. You know, we didn't... We, 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 the clip's gone out. But in terms of what we said, you know, you can't hear. But I let you know, he was, just, he was just down. He was just saying, we're just in a bad moment. You know, the confidence is low. The confidence is down. And I'm saying to him, look, bro, us as fans, we're... We're, we're, listen, we're there. We're trying to get behind you guys. We're trying to see a way through this, but the whole thing needs to restart. And I actually just, I actually said that to him and I felt a bit bad because I don't know what he, what he felt I meant by that. I said, the whole thing needs to scrap and start again, bro. And he was sort of just taking it in. He wouldn't, didn't really respond to that bit. I'm not, I'm not going to be out here saying, I don't know, like he gave me an exclusive and said this. It was just a, a pure, real uh, emotion that I displayed to him as a fan to somebody that he can, you know, resonate with. And I said, bro, it looks like we're not together out there. And he said, I know, I get it, I get it. We're in a tough moment. And that's what hurts. It's, it's just like, you, you can't see where it goes from there. Well done, mate, you played well, well done, well done. You played well. Um, and 
and you know, the, the, and I said the West Ham fans are off happy. You know, they're they're, they're really buzzing with, with with beating Man United two 0 without without even needing to be great. It's easy to beat Man United. It's e we're easy to play against. We're very predictable. You know, we're easy to defend against. Zuma, he's he coming across quite a few times, clearing the ball. Kufal, Sufal was good in in the in the, in the tackle. Ganacho didn't get no joy out of him. On the other side, who was at Emerson was comfortable. They're all just comfortable. Mavropanos, the Arsenal reject, he don't even play. Comfortable. So, look, they, they deserve their win. They deserve their win and they deserve to relish in it. And they're, they're being, you know, quite reasonable, to be fair. Um, but we are just staring down the barrel again, one game away from crisis. And again, the Liverpool game just, that was just about not, not getting smashed. Let's be honest, you know what happened there. Um, but this is the reality of what we are. And that is, that is what, four games on the trot without scoring a goal? From Bournemouth to now, absolutely awful. And then you've got Aston Villa, Boxing Day. They'll probably turn us over. <laughs> They'll probably turn us over, you know? And we have to expect that. And this Man United side, you don't know what's coming around the corner apart from mediocrity. And you don't know how they're going to get out of it. I don't see players that are cohesive. I don't see players that are, um, you know, understanding how to play together. And that is one of the biggest things because Ten Hag's not getting that out of them. Now, don't get me wrong. Players are trying, but... It's not good enough. It's not good enough. I'm, I'm not saying that they're just down tools. It's more, do you know what? When it's the down tools thing, you can just look at it and say they've given up. This looks like they just ain't got a clue. You know, and I, and I get injuries and illnesses and suspensions and all these things, but they're not real life excuses, man. They're not. When the, the level of performance that we're seeing and how we're playing, they're not proper excuses. And, you know, it's only going to get from bad to worse. Again, I'm not going to change my opinion and say, look, listen, this Ten Hag needs to leave and stuff like that. Still going to stick by what I'm saying because I've said it many times. There's going to be more pain. Like, we're going to get worse, and we are. Do you know what I mean? We got by against Liverpool, didn't score a goal. Here, pathetic performance. And then against Villa, it could be a bloody cricket score. Do you know what I mean? Then after that, who is it? I think Forest, then Spurs in the new year. Like, it's peak. More pain is coming. Buckle in. Buckle in and weirdly, this is the sort of game you probably expected against Liverpool where we would lose 2-0 or something like that or more. But it's just not good enough. And Man United are in a bad place. Um, you know, could the players give us a little thing just before Christmas? No, they couldn't. Um, and, I, and, I, and I just look at it and I'm just like, I don't know when our next goal is going to be scored. I don't know how Eric Ten Hag gets the confidence up. Midfield balance looks poor no matter who plays, no matter who, who he selects. There's always problems at the back in terms of who comes in. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. But again, the definition of insanity, again, doing the same things. I know this. And maybe I do need to take a bit of what KG and, 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 and um, Hayley were saying in the, in the, in the, on the last game. We know this. I know this. So I'm not surprised. I'm not even angry. Um, and roll on Villa. Uh, we're going to get Gabby Agbonlahor on for a preview of that. That'll go down fun. He's going to be absolutely chucking in. If they roll us over, we'll be in the mud even more. So, guys, listen, have a good Christmas. Try not to let the football dictate your mood. If you do celebrate Christmas and you just remember, be with family and be happy. Obviously, if you guys are not celebrating Christmas, big up to you wherever you're doing throughout the time. But Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Man United.